For this is the day that the Lord has made. And we ought to rejoice and be glad in it. I don't know what you come to do. But I come to lift up the name of Jesus. Because he has been good to me. And since I know he doesn't discriminate, I know he's been good to you. And so we ought to lose our minds up in here, up in here, because God has been good to us. Amen. Amen. Come on, praise to you. Good morning, good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Somebody say hallelujah. hallelujah. Anybody glad to be here this morning? Yeah. Turn to your neighbor, give them a big smile, say, I love you. There ain't a thing you can do about it. Come on, stand to your feet. This is the last Sunday for Black History. So we're going to sing our Black National Anthem. Everybody have a sheep. Anybody want a sheep that don't have one? Okay. Here we go.
Amen. Let us welcome our gift with a hand of praise. Come on, welcome our guests. Come on, come on, come on, come on. Come on, I want to hear you. I want to hear you. I want to hear you. Yeah, 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 yeah. Come on, come on, come on. We're glad to see all of you today. Glad to fellowship with you. We hope that you enjoy. Anybody just glad to be in the service? Yeah. Turn to your neighbor and say, neighbor, I'm glad to be in the service. One more time. Come on, here we go. One, two, one, two, three, and...
see a bright future in this young man. Keep doing what you're doing. Are you really glad to be in the city? I was glad when they said unto me, let us go into the house of the Lord. And now that I'm here, I'm glad. And now that I'm here, I'm glad. What you glad about? You woke me up this morning. Amen. Clothed me in my right mind. Amen. Then I had enough sense to come to the house of the Lord and give him some praise. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Brother Stan. Praise to you. Uh, one thing about Brother Stan, he going to use anybody and everybody during his praise and worship moment. Amen. Amen. Thank this young man for being so obedient. And I was listening to him. He was praying to him. Why she said, y'all don't laugh at me, so I'm going to ask her. Is that called a saxophone? Yeah. Yeah, okay. Yeah, so, so, so he was playing, and I was sitting up there, and I couldn't hear him. I said, I watched Brother Stan go get him in some kind of way. And then I was looking at the guy on the guitar. I said, watch Brother Stan. Sure enough, he got them all in. Amen. And everybody got a right to praise him. I said, everybody got a right to praise him. Amen. Amen. It does my heart good this morning. Uh, I want to talk about New Beginning Church Pastor. Uh, ever since Double Portion has been here, God has blessed us in November of 2011. I've been longing to fellowship with this brother. We have a lot in common. I received my master's from Houston Graduate School of Theology. He received his master's from Houston Graduate School of Theology. Uh, his pastoring is unorthodox like mine, meaning that you can come sing in the choir, you can work on the worship board, and you don't have to be a member of this church. I let you decide when you want to come to Christ. Because the most important thing that we don't understand as Christians is faith comes by hearing. And hearing by the word of God. And his pastor style is unorthodox like mine. Amen. He called me after we had agreed finally. And I could hear the joy in his voice. I could, Cause we've been longing for this. Even though we talk, his church is just right around the corner. Matter of fact, we can, we can, yeah, we can walk up there. I was going to say jog, but I'm, the jogging days are over with. But the shoe mile just right up the road. Y'all know on the left hand side. And my most proudest moment of him is when they stole all y'all copper from the church. Had y'all on 2, 11, 13. And y'all pastor could have been mad. Y'all pastor could have been, could have got mad. But on 2 level and 13, he just said, I'm going to pray for them. The Bible does say pray for your enemies. I know you want to beat them up, but first try praying first. Amen. And so uh, he's married to his lovely wife, and his wife is just like my wife. They do everything around the church. Amen. They, they, they do everything around the church. And, and where would the man of God be without his bride? And then I found out some more information. This brother just received his doctoral degree from Backey Graduate University in Transformational Leadership. Get it? Transformation. 
leadership. Transfer. I, I like that. I like that. Because I want to be in a church worshiping where everybody don't look like me. <laughs> Most segregated day is Sunday. And I, and I mess with all my white pastor friends. When y'all gonna have service? Yes, sir. A diversification service. Yes, sir. I got news for y'all. When you get to heaven, on, everybody not gonna look like you. Yes, sir. And so I thank God for this man of God. He's gonna come at this time in the service. The rest of the service belongs to my friend, my brother in the late in, in, in the ministry. Uh, Pastor Matthew A. Davis. Come on, give some love. Baby. Take this way to the Lord. Come on, come on. You can see when you begin. Y'all will be standing up all over. It's y'all, Pastor. I'm talking. Giving on to God our Father, to Jesus Christ our Lord and our Savior. To the Holy Spirit, our leader, our teacher, our confidant, and our guide. Amen. It's just good to be here. We are grateful to God for another privilege, another honor, another opportunity to come just north of the southeast side. Thank you, Pastor Falls, for being so kind, for inviting us out to your early morning service, and we're just good to be here. Let me say to the double portion church, where you are twice as nice. Thank you for rearranging, rescheduling, repositioning yourself to welcome your friends from around the corner. Thank you for being kind to us. As, as Pastor Fowles and I were talking, we were telling each other where we were and in the times of the church service. He said, well, Doc, we just moved it. And so thank you for being at your church at an earlier time just to accommodate the New Beginning Church. There is no heart like the heart of Pastor Mark Falls. Thank you so much. For us, this is twofold. This is African American Heritage Day and it is Youth Sunday at the New Beginning Church, so we brought, we brought some youth and young people with us. Amen. And they, they do things that I wish I could have done, but we're just glad to have them. All those who are with uh, New Beginning Church, will you stand? I want to thank you for, for being here. Thank you, thank you, thank you. It, it does the pastor's heart good when... He's leading, and there are some followers. Because one theologian says, if you're leading and no one's following, you're just taking a walk. So thank you for not allowing me to walk right around the corner. <laughs> thank you for your fellowship. God has been good to us, and we want to welcome our youth and our young people up to, to bring us our music. They're led by Sister Carolyn J. Davis. She kind of keeps everything in line at, in our youth ministry, in our music ministry, and even in our household. Amen. Amen. So we want to thank these young people for getting up early on Sunday morning. Amen. Traveling across town and being a part of this service at the Double Portion Church. Will you pray with them as they come? Okay, we want to welcome you all and thank you all so much for coming out. This is uh, the New Beginning Youth Ministry, and we're going to do several things for you. First of all, we're going to play xylophone. We're going to play an African piece called Makosa. After we play xylophone, we're going to do a Harriet Tubman rap. All and right. then we're going to sing a song called uh, They Took a Stand. And then we're going to sing Amazing Grace. And we're going to oh, ask y'all to help us on that. Oh, yeah.
this song is one. Now we've got one, two, ready, go. This song is my cosa.
so Lord.
to your name. We glorify you. We magnify you. We bless your holy name. God, we thank you for who you are and for what you do. We pray, Father God, that you continue to watch over us. Lord. Girls, about the Jesus we serve. We thank victory. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen and thank God. Praise God. Praise Him. Praise Him. Praise Him. Praise God. Praise God. Praise God. Praise God. God. Praise, God. Praise Him. Praise Him. Praise the name of Jesus. We serve the awesome and the amazing God. He has blessed us one more day. Just to raise our hands, He blessed us one more day. Just to say, Lord, I thank you. He has tremendously blessed us. In the Old Testament, I want to call your attention to the book of Esther. The book is Esther in the Old Testament. The book is Esther. The chapter is 4. The verses are 13 through 17. Esther chapter 4, verses 13 through 17. We serve the good God. We serve the amazing God. We serve the awesome God. There's nobody like our God. There's none like him. The Old Testament, the book of Esther, chapter 4, verses 13 through 17. I'm reading from the New King James Version. And you found that you will discover these words. And Mordecai told them to answer Esther. Do not think in your heart that you will escape the king's palace any more than all the other Jews. For if you remain completely silent at this time, Relief and deliverance will arise from the Jews, for the Jews, from another place. Yeah. But you in your father's house will perish. Yet, who knows whether you will come to the kingdom for such a time as this? Then Esther told them to reply to Mordecai. Go gather all the Jews who are present in Shunah uh -huh. and fast for me, neither eat nor drink for three days, night or day. My maids and I will fast likewise. 
And so I will go to the king, which is against the law. And if I perish, I perish. So Mordecai went his way and did according to all Esther commanded him. I want to talk about trust God and live. Trust God and live. You may be seated. March 7, 1965, approximately 600 march marchers made an attempt to cross the Independence Bridge between Selma, Alabama and Montgomery, Alabama. They were marching because there were so many killings of African Americans. They were marching because they were denied the right to vote. And as this some 600 people began to march, as they began to leave Selma with the idea of going to Montgomery, Alabama, to march against the unequal rights of an evil governor, George Wallace himself, they were met with dogs, they were met with tear gas, they were met with state troopers, and they were met with highway patrolmen. They were beaten. Some of them were beaten to death. Some of them were beaten unconscious. They were led by a young man named John Lewis. In video and picture this depicts that John Lewis was hit in the back of his head. He was not temporarily unconscious. But he came to the conclusion that some things are worth dying yes, sir. Yes, sir. in behalf of. From that day forward, John Lewis became the radical that will tell us even in the 21st century, if you see something, say something. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. If you see something that's wrong, do something. Yes, and here we have this slogan, living even as the man himself no longer lived. If you see something, you ought to say something. Yes, sir. If you see something, you ought to do something. We find ourselves in the midst, even years later, with racism breeding upon us, with discrimination all around us. I just want to remind our young people that it does not matter what color you are. You are precious in the sight of God. God has beautifully and wondrously made you. You are special to God, and because you are special to God, God will fight our battles. When we look at the media and we see that those who say that slavery was good for the United States of America, we find ourselves still marching and fighting even after the death of George Floyd, yes, sir. even after the death of Tamir Wright, on, even after the death of Breonna Connors, yeah. we still have to march. I want to say to you today that we find ourselves in the book. We find ourselves just as one group of people known as the Jews see that march in the fight was for liberation. Uh -huh. The march in the fight was for the sake of salvation. Yes, the march in the fight was for the sake of equal rights. But there will always be somebody that have come to the conclusion, regardless of who you are, you don't deserve to be equal to me. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. We find ourselves in the midst of a MAGA campaign yes, sir. where we want to make America great again. Oh, I believe it's time that we do not stand by yes, and watch the hands of time repeat itself. Yes, sir. We ought to, like Mordecai in the text, yes, sir. we ought to find somebody who has the ear of the king yes, <laughs> and tell the king all about it. Yes, Our king is Jesus, yes, the righteous lamb of God. Yes, 
Let me just let me just say to you, when we look at the text, we find first of all a statement. Yeah, there's a statement. There's a statement. Haman had come to the point where because Mordecai didn't respect him, because Mordecai didn't bow down to him, the statement that he made was to get rid of all the Jews. And that March 7, 1965, they wanted to make a statement. And the statement was to get rid of all people of African-American descent. It is now known as Bloody Sunday. It was on a Sunday, a Bloody Sunday, and that they beat our kind, where they whipped us unconsciously. It was on a Bloody Sunday, where they beat men, women, boys, and girls, where they passed out in the street. Many of them died. It was Bloody Sunday, because the, the, the highway was spreaded with blood. I want to tell you this morning, somebody even in the 21st century is trying to make a statement. And they're trying to make a statement at your expense. Haman makes a statement. He says, he says, I tell you what, I want to make sure you understand that I'm going to have, uh, I'm going to have Mordecai impaled on a pole. Yes, sir. His folk came. His, you know, everybody got a parcel. Everybody got somebody that can feed them junk. Everybody have cheerleaders. And you don't have to be right to have a cheerleader. You don't have to be winning to have a cheerleader. Everybody has a cheerleader, and your cheerleader will always sponsor a pep rally on your behalf. Yeah, Haman. Haman had Haman had cheerleaders that sponsored his pep rally, and his cheerleader said to him, Tell you what you do, go and convince the king. Yes, sir. To hang Mordecai on a pole. Yes, sir. Out in front of everybody to make a statement. Yeah, he looks to make a statement. And let me tell you, if you go to sleep today, if you don't stay alert today, statements will be made in this election. If you go to sleep today, you will go to sleep one night and it's like this. And you wake up the next day and it'll be the same old, same old. Everybody has cheerleaders, and the cheerleaders are trying to make a statement. My next point is right there in the text, Eric. Right there in the text, uh, the, the, the statement is, the statement is, we're going to kill the Jews. My next point is, there's a solution. Every pollution has a solution. Every depression has a solution. Every time you're at close quarters and, and you don't know which way to turn, God has a solution for you, and God can bless you real good, and he better plan it. Look at the text. The text that said, declares in verse number 13, you know, Esther has already said that I don't have permission to go before the king. No, no. Because if I go before the king without the king calling me, then I could die in the hands of the king. Yes, sir. He says, Mordecai says to her, let me tell you something, Esther. There's a solution, and you seem to be the solution. Yes, sir. He says to her, he says to her, don't you think in your heart? Don't you even reason in your head that just because you're the queen, you got it made? Don't you come to the conclusion just because you reside in the king palace that you got it going on? Let me just say to you today, just because you got it rolling like you want to roll it right now, doesn't mean you got it going on. Just because you dress the way you want to dress, doesn't mean you got it going on. I stand today to remind you that I stand on the shoulder of many that have come before me. I stand on the shoulder of those who have bled, died, who were killed, who were not unconscious, just so I can stand here today. If one man decided I'm going to be a self-made man. I, and if I can't be a self-made man, I'm going to be self-made or nothing at all. He turned out to be both. A self-made nothing man, nothing at all. Let me tell you, we stand, mama, we stand on your shoulders this morning. Daddy, we stand on your shoulders this morning. Big mama, big daddy, we stand on your shoulders this morning. We stand on the shoulders of those who have taken a beating just for us. I oftentimes tell our young people things hadn't always been like this. 
It, it didn't happen like this overnight. This, and people gave their lives for this. People bled and died for this. Just because you can walk in the front door doesn't mean we always were able to walk in the front door. Just because you see us driving the bus, we've not always been able to drive the bus. Matter of fact, Rosa Parks was here. She'll tell you that I was sitting in my seat. My feet were tired. My whole body was tired. And they told me to get up out of my seat and give it to another man. And I said, my feet is tired and I'm not moving. And they made her go out the door and put her in a jail cell. Let me share with you today, we are worse off in the 21st century than we were in the 20th century. Because we have people in leadership who are eyes are closed and, and they look forward to making money instead of transforming this great nation in which we live. But there's a solution. There is somebody somewhere who has the ear of the king. And if they, because they have the ear of the king, they can speak. And the king can make things happen. Monica says, Esther, you have the ear of the king. And, and don't you think, don't you get it in your mind, don't you get it in your heart, just because you reside next to the king, just because you have a, a building outside the palace, just because you have a place in the palace that you got it going on. He said, don't you think in your heart that you will escape from this king's palace and be better off than any of us? You know, we can get a dime over a dollar. Come on now. And we think we really got it going. We can drive what we want to drive. And we, we look down on other folk. But the same folk you meet on your way up the ladder, you're going to meet the same folk coming down the ladder. It, it is not something that we ought to do simply because we understand that if I'm oppressed, it's just a matter of time before you get oppressed. Yes, sir. That's why Dr. King, Dr. King said, to, to those who were, were not African American. This thing will not change until those of you who are not Negroes come and march with us. And then white people died so we can have the freedom to vote. White people died and they marched with us and, and therefore we have to make sure we understand that there are other folk that have given their lives just for you. There's a solution. Mordecai says, Esther, there's a solution. And you need to understand, Esther, uh, you need to take a stand. Yes, sir. My next point is there needs to be a stand. You got to take a stand. You just can't do business as usual. You just can't walk around just because you got it going on. You just can't walk it around and talk about, oh, I used to be down and out, but I'm no longer down and out. And we need to cut that stuff out. When as long as I'm riding the bus, you my friend. As long as I'm having to ask you for a dollar, you're my friend. But the moment I get a job with benefits, then you think you something. Let me tell you, sisters and brothers, when they come to you, your friends come to you and make the statement, you think you're something, that's not a compliment. What they're saying is, I liked you better when you were thumbing the ride. I liked you better when you were doing the things that you needed help. I liked you better when you were on welfare. Now you're off welfare. Now you got your own ride. Now you live and you move on up. You just come up to, to par. And now they say that you think you got it going on and everybody can't do it. Right. Let me just tell you, when you hear everybody can't do it, you tell them, no, you can't. But when you walk with the Lord, when, when, you, when you totally submit unto him, when you do it God's way, God is able to bless you and keep you. He's able to keep our mind. Let me tell you, we are here today not because we're so smart. We are here today not because we got degrees. We are here today not because we do our health training and, and we are able to do our training. And you may look like a Coca-Cola bottle right now, but you getting ready to leave. You may be well connected in this city, this state, in this nation. But sooner or later, they going to cut the string. See, we got to stop depending on men pulling strings for us. Because men pull strings and strings can be cut. We ought to look to God because God opened doors that no man can open. God opened windows and he poured out a blessing that we don't have room enough to receive. So the solution today is to take a stand. If you see something wrong, deal with it. Too often we run. Too often we move over. 
Too often we march for just a moment and they know you're going to march for a moment because you did it last time. Two weeks, three weeks, and you got to go back to work. <laughs> Two weeks, three weeks, and then there's a hush. Two weeks, three weeks, and then we've forgotten about what happened. But we have to stay with the Lord. And we have to take a stand for the Lord. Not only do we have to take a stand, we have to take a stand for righteousness, righteousness, even though the authorities around us say don't do it. I'm telling, I tell our young people all the time, if the police pulls you over, it's yes ma'am, no ma'am, yes sir, no sir. Both hands on the stern wheel. I used to tell them both hands on the stern wheel. A pastor now I tell them stick the hands out the window. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. And and don't argue, don't perform your court case on the side of the road. Don't don't get into a squabble on the side of the road. Make sure you keep your hands where they can see you. Turn your dome lights on where they can see you. Make sure that you clean and clear. And if they still do crazy things, make sure you have done what is right. Because they're looking for a way to annihilate you. They're looking for a way to turn you out. And to turn your life from a flicker. Turn your life from a flame to a decreased, null, and void person. But well, well, Monica says, not only should we understand the statement. Not only do we realize that there is a solution. We also need to know that there is salvation. Amen. Yeah, there, there, there's a statement that is made, and the statement is, I'm after you. <laughs> Jesus says to Peter, Peter, the devil has asked for you, yes, and the devil wants to sift you like yes. sifting wheat. Yes. That's how we have to remind our children, children, just listen for a moment. Uh -huh. Just be still for a moment. Just understand, we didn't get old, great, and bald by being fools. There is some knowledge we still have. And I know we're old fogey. I know we really don't know what we're talking about. I know internet wasn't in when I was your age. But let me tell you, we made it without internet. Yes, sir. I, 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 I always observe the fact that mama has the same phone number yeah. since 50 years ago. You got a sister. Mama has the same phone number that she had 50 years ago. And then we had party lines. And they weren't, they weren't crowded because if your phone ring, 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 the other person knows not to pick it up. If your phone ring, ring, then the other person knows to pick it up. But let me just share with you, there are young people who change their phone. And I got folk right here in my phone right now that I have to put dates on their phone number. Let me just call it. <laughs> you have to put dates on their phone number. Well, 2022, that was at, at June the 5th, 2022, it was this phone number. June the 5th, 2025, it was this phone number. June the 5th, 2020, it was this phone number. So I just have to go down until I find the last date so I know I'm calling the right phone number. <laughs> Big Mama didn't have a third grade education, but she never lost a house. She, she never lost a car. She never got put out on the street. <laughs> Big Mama didn't have a third grade education, but she was able to feed all 14 grandchildren. She was able to knead the dough. I'm telling you, we're standing on other folks' shoulders, and as we stand on their shoulders, we have to appreciate what they have already gone through because they've gone through hard times. I always say, young, feet, young people, I made more money today than my parents have made in their whole lifetime. And I ought to be able to keep a car. I, I ought to be able to keep my house. I, I ought to be able to act right so I don't get evicted. And it's just because the solution is that God keep us and God blesses us. The Bonner Report says when we left home today and we left our communities, 80% of the people stayed in their houses and they're not going to church, they're not going to a synagogue, they're not going to a mosque anywhere. What that says is if you live in an apartment complex, 80% of that entire apartment complex is sleeping in while we're having church. 
Let me tell you, if you live in a community, it says 80% of the folk in your community, uh, they are staying in today because this is the only day they have to rest. And they get it so twisted that they need to rest on the Sabbath. That tells me you should have rest yesterday. But this is the Lord's day. And we ought to get up with the Lord and give our all to him and thank him. Because the Lord's day is the first day of the week. Jesus got up on the first day of the week. And when he got up on the first day of the week, the Bible says they ran and they rejoiced and they blessed the name of the Lord. Yes, yeah, so while, you, while you're watching football, baseball, while you're going to volleyball and soccer, you ought to be resting because it's the Sabbath. It's the last day. And that ought to be the only day you have to rest. You, you need to make sure that you can cancel, you can cancel your gym membership. Because when you go to church on Sunday, you ought to get enough exercise for the whole entire week. When you, when you go to church on Sunday, you ought, to, you ought to be able to put stuff aside to, to celebrate the awesome God that we serve. If you go to church on Sunday, you ought not be so pious and stuck up on yourself until you can't give God the glory. Because after all, God is the one who keeps us. He's the one who blesses us. We can't keep our own mind. He kept us this morning. Salvation, I see it in the text. Oh, yeah. Salvation in the text. Mm. Esther comes to the conclusion. <laughs> well, cut Medica, Malachi, cut Mordecai, since you put it like that, okay. I'm going to go and meet the king. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. He says, she says, what you do is call for a fast among all the Jews. Yeah. And when you call for a fast, there should be no food or drink taken in for three days. It lost half of us right there. No, 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 no food, no water, no soda for, for three whole days. No eating. You're focusing on God. You're focusing on prayer. And as we move into our prayer time next month, we need to make sure that we focus our time on God. And whenever we get a headache, we call on the Lord like we never called on him before because we're saying to God as we fast, God, I want you more than I want steak. God, I want you more than I want beef. Lord, I want you more than I want a soda. God, I want all of you. I want to experience you in a mighty way. So Esther says, call for a fast. And when you call for a fast, tell them don't eat. Tell them don't drink. Just make sure they call on the Lord because I'm going before the king. My, my, my subject is trust God and live. The God that we serve is able to keep us alive. You see, salvation is not just being saved from our sin. Salvation is being delivered from the trouble we're in. And here, Mordecai says to Esther, he said, now if you choose not to do it, if you want your history to be written that you chose not to do it, God can bring somebody and he will raise somebody up that's not on the scene right now. I know, I know, I know, I know many people cussing out the mama and the grandmama and the granddad. God wants to use you. We have too many divorced even in the church. God wants to use you. It's time for you to speak up. It's time for you to stand up. It's time for us to make a difference. That's what Jesus did over 2,000 years ago. My Lord and your God. Mean men killed him, I tell you. They took him up to God Foster's Hill. They, they took him up to Skull Hill called Calvary. He gave his life for you, and he gave his life for me. He was making a statement. He was, he was giving a solution, I tell you. He was taking a stand, and he became our salvation. God's only begotten son, the righteous son of God. Jesus the Christ himself, God's only unique son, the one who gave his life for him. He gave his voluntary life on a skull hill called Calvary. They nailed him tight, and they riveted him in his side. They raised him up. They stretched him wide. Oh, yes, they did. They killed my God and your God. On Calvary, he died. They took him off the cross, laid him in a barber tomb. It was a barber tomb, I tell you. It was a barber tomb. He stayed there. But out of that third day morning, he rose with all power in heaven and earth in his hand. He got up from the dead. He rose, I tell you. That same Jesus. What a cloud. He got out of here. He's sitting on the right hand of the Father, creating solutions for us. That same Jesus.
Jesus gonna catch a cloud one day. He's gonna ride back in here and at the trump of God, at the trump of God, at the voice of the dark of the angel, he will crack the sky. And the dead in Christ shall rise first. If I don't see you no more, if I don't make it round the corner, it's all right. Because one of these old days, I'm going to join the King of Kings, the one on the other side. I'm going to have his ear. I'm going to join the King of Kings. I'm going to join the four beastly creatures. God, holy, holy, holy. Blessed is the Lamb that was slain from the foundation of earth. Thank God for Jesus. I say I thank God for Jesus. He is Big Mama's walking cane. He is Granddaddy's leaning pole. He is the bridge over trouble water. Thank God for Jesus. He's a horse born in the valley. He's the light bright morning star. Thank God for Jesus. His name is Jesus, the Son of God. He's coming back to, to get a church without a spot and that a rank. I'm on my way to the other side. And if I don't see you anymore, it's all right. I'm going to have a brand new body. No more headaches. No more belly aches. No more backstabbing. No more lying. Over there, every day going to be Sunday. The sorrow will have no use for that. The city will be lit up by the Son of God. And I'm going to cry, holy, holy, holy. Blessed is the man that was slain before the foundation of the doors of my father's house are open. There may be one. You have heard this message. Oh, yes. But now is the time to come give your hand to the preacher. But most of all, give your hand to the God that you can trust and have everlasting life. Is that one? Did not our heart burn 
why so much evil exists in my opinion because Christians we're afraid to make a stand some say sweep around your own front door I'm going to sweep around no. you see something wrong you got to say something you have to do something amen thank you Dr. Matthews amen right quickly come on why are you catching this breath come on brother Lance uh, come on brother Rodney let's take up our offering Amen. Amen. Can't beat God's giving. Uh, how hard you try. Brother Lance, use that, use that young man right there for the other right here. Come on, come on, son. Yeah, come on. Show him. Show him tough. Go around. And so we have those change buckets. Cause I tell everybody, you can't sneak up on anybody with all that change in your pocket. So here's a chance. Here's, for you, here, here's a chance for you to offload all that change. Amen. And I already told Pastor Matthew uh, same time, same bat station next year if the Lord say the same. Amen. And y'all, y'all give it up for these young folks. They really, they really bless my heart. They, they, they really bless my heart. They allow God to use them. And uh, talking to Pastor Davis, they from the community. sitting in the back and my minister usually be fussing at the praise team because they give them a song and they haven't took time to go over it, know the words. Thank you. I have a solution. I have a solution and I will make a stand. Amen. 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 Shall we pray? Eternal God, our Father, Lord, we thank you for this opportunity to give back to you. 
Thank you for the tithers. Thank you for the offers. Shake it down. Press it. Make it run over that your kingdom might be glorified. That you might be glorified and your kingdom edified. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Thank you all. Now before I bring Pastor Davis back up, I want to thank New Beginning Church uh, from the bottom of my heart. And that's one thing that I'm trying to teach double portion. Is that when your pastor go out and preach at other churches, he needs fellowship. Because if the church doesn't follow him, then he's just walking. Can, can I take it a little step further? You let your pastor keep going praying at other churches. They'll put the other pastor out and bring your pastor in. There. Falls, man, the church come. No, no, no. Y'all got to listen. When y'all follow the man of God, your blessings is through the, read the Bible. Stay with the man of God. That's where your blessings come from. And so I, I, I'm just re reiterating it because y'all missed that because he thanked New Beginning Church for following him. And so I'm no longer begging, pleading, putting on my James Cole, James Brown cape. Y'all supposed to follow your pastor. Follow your pastor. Thank you, New Beginning, for setting the example. I've learned a lot today. Amen. Come on back up, Pastor Davis. And then we got, for these little ones, let me tell you something. I want them the first one to get all them donuts. All right. Because some of us, we don't need, listen, they got, they got some glazed donuts back there with all that sugar on it. Don't go back. And then tell me, Lord knows my heart. No, you're not going to eat that donut with all that sugar on it. And you know what you got. So let, you, <laughs> let these babies eat them donuts and those galoshes and those sandwiches. Would y'all do that for me, please? Amen. Somebody say, he crazy. I'm crazy for the Lord. Thank you, Pastor Falls. Thank you, um, Double Portion, for being twice as nice, for being the church around the corner. Thank you so much. Thank you, New Beginning. Thank you for, for your presence. I know we're happy. I know we're having a good time, but we start at 1030 around the corner. So please, ma'am, please, sir, go ahead and get started uh, around the corner now. Pastor Falls done messed up our, our service, giving these children donuts. So. <laughs> Lord have mercy, Jesus. <laughs> what a time. We're going to have a good time in the Lord today. So um, I want to ask the men, as we as we finish with the benediction, I want to ask the men to help us pack everything up real quick. Right? And I guess the children are going to go eat kolaches. Kolaches, kolaches, kolaches. And uh, then they're going to be right around the corner because they have to, to read redo what they've done here today and, and they've been faithful and uh, we're looking forward to taking a group of them to Mississippi and Tennessee to the Civil Rights Museum and the B.B. King Museum it is, a, it is a mission trip it is a mission trip so they they supposed to be taking up money and doing fundraisers to make it happen for themselves and, and we're just uh, if they weren't manable they wouldn't go amen and so we're looking forward to taking a group of them on a bus to Mississippi in June. And so if they hit you up for something, they're not going to go buy donuts. They're going to Mississippi and to Tennessee. And so, so Pastor, I'm, I'm donating $500 towards the trip. Amen. Thank you so much. Now follow your path. I get to decide, decide which one I give it to. I may put $5 on this one, $5 on this one, $5 on this one, until, until we get $500. Thank, thank you so much, Pastor. Are we benedicting? Yes. Yes. Let us stand. Let us stand. Let the church stand. Let the church stand. Let the church stand. Let the church stand.
Father God, we thank you now. We thank you, Father God, whenever there's a statement made that you give us a solution. We thank you for blessing us to be able to take a stand. We thank you, Father God, that you are able to bless us with the salvation of Jesus Christ. We ask you to bless us as we go. Never leave our presence. Now unto him who is able to keep us from falling. Unto him, the only wise and only true God. Unto him be power, glory, and dominion. Until we meet again, let us sing together. Amen, God bless.